Writing a story is an adventure, <laughs> and your characters help pull it along. Are you writing characters for long, drawn-out exposition, or are you writing characters for personality? Here's a few tricks to give your character character. Let me show you how in this video. Let's make a right, left, here. Do you have what it takes to make a right, left, to you? What's up, good people? I'm Thomas J. Beleza, and welcome to my video. If this is your first time to my channel and you're looking for ways to succeed in entertainment, I'll do so by subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss out. A great story can easily fall apart with the bland characters, especially when characters are there only to tell exposition. It's so boring. If you ever learn how to write good exposition, <laughs> check out that video. I'm telling you. Think to yourself, are the characters you're writing for this particular story adding any volume, any, any flavor? Are they pulling the story along? Or are they just furniture that need to say a particular line to get a particular plot moving on? Oh, welcome to Friends. Oh, good. Now I know the characters are in Friends. Um, I guess we'll never see that guy again. Thinking about your character and if they're furniture or if they're actually pulling the story around, help clean up the story overall. Basically make your script, novel, or whatever it is you're working on more tangible for audiences to grasp. Because, you know, obviously when you realize your character is only there and their sole duty is to say A, B, and C, then they're done. It's time to get the work. Personally, I would say build on this character and develop them. If you don't want to and you don't see a future for this particular character, throw them out. Dissolve them and take whatever important lines they had and place them into already developed characters. What I'm saying is the more developed your characters are with personality, the more it will drive your story and keep it entertaining. And if you're wondering how to do so, here are a few ideas to help you. And stay for the end. Uh, that's going to be a helpful tip. Why, how, where, and when they say what they say really helps develop who they are. Knowing why a character is even speaking helps develop their personality. This also influences how they say what they say. In turn, knowing when and where they speak or don't speak help you understand that character's particular motivations. Because believe it or not, speaking just to speak doesn't necessarily help the character develop, nor does it develop and move the story along. You might write, I can't believe your brother beat up that kid on Friday in front of the convenience store. This is full on exposition. The reason it's full on exposition is because it's actually telling you what has happened in the past, when it happened, and where it happened with who. And who was there? To add flavor, maybe take this particular sentence and break it up and move it throughout a story. A page, two pages, a few scenes, whatever it is, let that information develop over time, especially uh, what's being said by uh, whatever character is saying it, and, uh, you know, their reasons and motives behind even saying it or bringing it up. Let's take that particular sentence I said earlier. I can't believe your brother beat up that kid. Friday in front of the convenience store. Break that sentence up and move it along in a script of one page. She had no idea I was even gonna do it, man. Total surprise. Dude, how, how'd you keep it from her? I had my parents hold it. I can't believe your brother. My brother? No, my brother. Yes, your brother. Still on this since last Friday. Because of him, we had to deal with the freaking police. He apologized. Apologized. Not the point. One minute was saying hi to him in front of the convenience store, and the next minute he's beating the crap out of the kid. Oh, Mike, just give it a rest. So you had to speak to the cops. We all did. You know I'm on probation, and now I'm embarrassed to even go back there. I want to show you the script on the screen, and I'm going to break it down for you, because well, why not? As you can see, we set up the room, and right off, we see what they like to drink. Basically, it's the exterior of Jack's house night. Three men stand at an outside house bar. Jack holds in his hand a beer. Chris and Mike have liquor in a short glass. Jack and Chris are in a conversation about how Jack proposed to his girlfriend while Mike is in his own head. 
We know this because Mike is looking in his glass and takes a sip. Also, he's not really listening to the excitement of what Jack and Chris are talking about, and that's why he interrupts them without even being enthused by the wonderful news of an engagement. Mike is clearly still bothered by something and interrupts Jack's good news. And the way they don't get mad at Mike for interrupting says a lot about A, their friendship, and B, that they all have been dealing with this since last Friday. It's something they all went through emotionally and mentally. Taking the line, I can't believe your brother beat that kid up on Friday in front of the convenience store and spreading it out over the course of the page helps establish character in all three people and build a scene. That's the fun part about adding to personality. Chris is clearly over it all and Jack loves his brother so he defends his actions to the point where he is agitated by Mike continuing to talk about Mike feeling misunderstood leaves. And this is why if you can create movement on a page throughout a scene by breaking up exposition, I recommend you do so. I believe you get more out of it. And it's a fun writing exercise to challenge yourself, which only benefits the story and the scene as well as the characters. One page character. I live by a small rule when it comes from writing. If you can't present any character within a page, you need to get back to work practicing how to write. In fact, one line should expose some character on that particular character. Because you're a writer. If you can't write character for a character in a page, there's no harm in going to practice or reading or learning or studying how other scripts work. You're more than what you say. So if you were put on a page and you just became what you said, how would you feel? Though I also agree that you should never be beholden to a page count or even your word count. I will say this though. If you can develop character on one page, you're doing great. I believe the limitation helps practice and develop your skill as a writer. But again, don't be beholden to the word count or page count I'm just saying it as a rule to better yourself as a writer. Because ultimately, this should help you master your skill when you have limitations. Have to write a monologue? Boom, I could do it. I can make it a half a page, a quarter of a page, a full page. I got this. And there'll be plenty of character in that monologue. Remember, words are only a very small part of what comes from a character. Work on why, how, when, and where they say what they say to influence who they are. Even in a one-page monologue, this will help you in establishing a very nice skill in storytelling. Thank you for watching this video and supporting these traveling adventures of a resilient entertainer. Please like, comment, and share the video along with subscribing for future content. Have questions? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't work too hard, but be productive. And remember to look at the people around you so you can work together, grow together, and rise together. Do you have what it takes to make a right left here? I do you, punk? I do you? I do. Oh dear.